Now, she was known for her outrageous hats and her uncompromising style. Among her discoveries, the designer Alexander McQueen. When editor and muse Isabella Blow took her own life in 2007, a chapter of British fashion history was closed. But now the highlights of her personal collection are going on show at London's Somerset House, thanks to another eccentric fashion icon, Daphne Gillis. Katie Razzle has been speaking exclusively to her about Blow's influence and her legacy today. Outlandish fashion is on show at London's Somerset House. Almost everything in the exhibition was worn by Isabella Blow, the stylist and patron of some of the best known names in British fashion. When she took her own life, her friend, the heiress Daphne Guinness, bought the collection. There were things in there that needed to be preserved in some way and, you know, who knows where they would be now. I found it very difficult to deal with the clothes myself because they smell of her. The pair had communed over their sense of style, their creative dress sense. I think it's just a state of mind, really. Um, what is that state of mind? It's just trying things out, really, you know, you're, you're experimenting. Or it's something that sort of it makes you happy. Daphne Guinness invited me into her London home ahead of the exhibition launch. Being amongst her friend's wardrobe is an emotional experience, so she asked one of the curators to show me around. She loved wearing odd shoes. Um, she was wearing uh, one pink and one black um, in the mid-80s at a party in New York when Andy Warhol walked by and said, gee, did you have to buy two pairs of shoes to get that look? And she said yes, and he said, I must take them to lunch. Isabella Blow wasn't just an avant-garde clothes horse. She was an influential stylist in fashion magazines. Most famously, she discovered as students and championed the milliner Philip Tracy and the designer Alexander McQueen, appearing with him here in Vanity Fair. This collection made McQueen a star. Blow bought most of it. Do you think it's wearable? Well, to the average person it might not be, but um, it was no obstacle to Isabella. And there are many a story um, from News International of Isabella wearing outfits like this to go to work in and then sitting down in the canteen with the printers and eating roast beef and potatoes. The model Sophie Dahl was another Blow discovery. The light sculpture in this shoot ended up in the Blow's curtainless home, giving some people the wrong impression. Um, but, um, by the time night came, um, this twinkled very gaily uh, um, and a, a number of men in the area did actually mistake it for a brothel. Blow's influence lives on. Lady Gaga has regularly paid homage to a woman she cites as an inspiration. The pop star says she and Daphne Guinness are cut from the same cloth too. Here they are in a photo by Terry Richardson tweeted out by Gaga. For many of us, high fashion is a mystery or another way to make women feel insecure about their bodies. Certainly most of us wouldn't fit into any of the clothes Isabella Blow collected. But Daphne Guinness had her own idiosyncratic take on why clothes matter. The first thing they do in order to change a civilization is they get rid of the clothes. So if you think about when the communists took over in China, I mean, the first thing they did was they cut off the, the pigtails, and they put everything, everybody into sort of like uniforms. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big statement. It's, it's making everybody the same. Not something her friend Isabella Blow could ever have been accused of.